and welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today I'm going to be walking you guys through a geode on top of a natural wood slice and it is my niece's birthday today. Happy birthday, Chloe. I love you. I just wanted to give that a quick shout out here at the beginning and let's get started. All right, so I started out with measuring out my stone coat epoxy resin, and it's just equal parts, so it's super easy. I have lines on the sides of my cups, and so I just look and see and make sure that they're even. And then I'm going to mix them together. It is recommended that you mix it for three minutes. I mix it a little bit over three minutes just because I didn't feel like it was mixed enough, and so I am a fan of over mixing and not under mixing. After I mixed all the resin, I went ahead and got three cups to divide out my pigments in. I am working with a white and a light blue and a dark blue. All three of them are from Patty's Pigments and they are all metallic. So they have a really pretty like glittery shine to them. And so I love the way that they finish out. So I'm just going to divide them into the three mixing cups and mix up a little bit of the pigments each. And it's about a one to 10 ratio of pigment to resin. Initially, I poured the majority of the resin into the white, thinking I was going to start with a white, white base coat. And I actually decided that I wanted to do the dark blue as my primary base coat. And so I went ahead and poured more resin and mixed more of the dark blue. And then I'm just going to build off of that. And in hindsight, it turned out fantastic. So I'm really glad I did that. After I spread out the dark blue with my gloves, I went ahead and here's where you just want to start laying down your lines and the colors. So I'm working with the white and I'm working with the teal. I like to always start with my white because I feel like that's the easiest one to mess up on. And if something does happen, it can fix fairly easily because you can mix it with pretty much anything and it'll look good. And if you notice when I first started pouring, it didn't pour very smoothly, but I'm totally okay with that. I don't mind just letting the resin do its work and creating a really pretty abstract piece. And then I'm just sort of outlining that with my teal. Now, because I am doing this on a wood plank, what happens since it's not taped off is the resin does fall over onto the side. It is going to run off. And so if you don't want that to happen and you don't want your colors to spread out and fade a little bit, then you really want to make sure that you have it taped around the edges and that way it kind of pulls in there. Now I'm not doing that and it does end up running over the sides quite a bit after I leave this piece and so I will explain it a little bit further along but I do fix it up with a couple um, different things and I'll explain that in a bit. So before I start laying down any of my texture I'm just adding in my visual movement within the piece and to do that I'm just sort of mixing some of the colors together and pulling off some of the resin that dripped off to the side already and just making it move a little bit instead of being solid colors. I really like movement within my pieces and this is just one of my favorite ways to accentuate a uniqueness in my geodes. So after I move it all about, <laughs> shake it all about, um, then I went ahead and added some texture. After I lay out my lines, now I'm just going to play around with where I might want to add some texture. I like to always start in the biggest white bold circular chunk down at the bottom, mostly because I feel like that's kind of my center of my geode. And so that's where I'm going to start laying in my texture with my glass filler. That's what I use. I got it from Michaels and it's normally found in the wedding aisle. Now don't mind my phone. I bring my phone in every once in a while to record different angles. I do this for my TikTok videos and you can find me on TikTok at Abstract Boss and it is just a different unique way to express the way that I do my art. So if you guys like to have short quick videos, definitely go ahead and head over there and follow me there as well. 
After I add my first texture, I'm just working with my vase filler first, and then I'm going to start adding in my glitters. I like to work with more than one color glitter because I think it creates a really good variety within the piece. So I'm working with my lightest glitter, and then I build darker, and I just lay it on all that texture. And then I'm going to start adding in some really unique broken glass, um, I guess... I don't want to say marbles because they're not marbles. Um, it's more like broken sea glass. I'm pretty sure I got it at Walmart a really long time ago. And I save all the, the textury things that I get. And I've broken up a lot of them over time. And so I'm pretty sure that one was from Walmart. I think I also got like pink and white ones. And so after I lay those down, I decide to start um, right on the outside there, adding in a little bit of glitter. And now I'm just going to start spreading it with my finger throughout the resin itself. And once you're done with the top and you are pretty satisfied with it, then you want to go ahead and make sure you take all your extra resin and touch up any of the exposed wooden sides that you see. You really want to make sure that all of that is covered because it is wood. <laughs> and so you want to make sure that there's no issues when it comes to water getting on your piece. I really like my pieces being waterproof. Um, on the back, they're not, but at least on the front, if something happens, if something were to spill on it, it's not a big deal and it's not going to ruin the art. All right, once you're done, um, take out any like little stray texture pieces that just sort of ran away and make sure you use your blowtorch to pop all the bubbles. And you're going to want to come back to this in about an hour. What happened for me after an hour is actually a good amount of it had run off, which I was prepared for. And so what I did was I actually took some of the silver gold, silver leaf, silver gold leaf. I took some of the silver leaf that I had and I laid that where I felt like my lines just diminished. They were sort of gone. And so I laid that within there. And because I was working with a very malleable resin that was okay with touching after a while, um, it was okay to just sort of drag a popsicle stick through it to add a couple more just visual lines because I don't like to really use the paint markers very often. And so I just added some visual lines and here's a quick video of what it looks like from the side under my curing rack. All right, so when I came back out, this is basically how it looked um, when it comes to the colors and the settling and the runoff. You can see that there's a lot of runoff that happened. Um, so when I came back out after an hour, I noticed this. I was a little disappointed at how much it settled um, and how much had ran off this way because I thought it was level, but I guess I was wrong. Um, so I'm gonna have to practice my leveling, I guess. <laughs> and so what I did though, mainly here, because you can tell that some of this blue had ran through here and I didn't like the way that it looked, but I also wanted to brighten it up a little bit. So I added in some of the silver leafing and what I did, and I have this on another video, so I'll try to find that and post it. But what I did was I took a popsicle stick and I just poked at it to make it like look like it's in and up a little bit and just sort of get rid of all the straight lines that come from the pieces that you set down in here. So that's all I did there, very simple. Um, I did add a little bit more rocks here because I felt like um, even though only like two rocks fell off, I felt like the way that the resin had moved down this way, there was a huge chunk that should have been a part of this now. So even though this was ending right here, I felt like all this extra blue just didn't add up now. And so that's why I had added in some extra rocks and some extra glitter and all that good stuff. So all that's there. Um, any of this glitter that was up on top here, that'll just wipe off now. And so I'll just clean it up and I'll clean up the back side. So on the back, I have the tape and that'll just peel right off. And then actually, here, I'll show you right now how that peels off. Okay, and then if it's being stubborn, kind of like now, um, you can just take some heat, like a heat gun, aim it at your tape a little bit, and then that'll pop right off. So I'll do that with a putty knife after the video. 
But I gotta get this video out for my baby girl so she can hear me say happy birthday. I hope it's amazing. I miss you so much, Chloe. And yeah, so that's it. So if you guys have questions, just go ahead and post them in the comments below. Um, it was a very simple process. It's a very easy, quick geo to do in one go round. If you want to add in extra lines with the um, pens, the paint markers, you can add them in right here, do whatever you want. I personally, I've done a video on this too, and I'll post this one, but I take a picture of the geode and then I go ahead and draw the paint markers on that picture before I try to put it on here. Um, a few other artists do that as well, just because then you're not touching it to here and having to worry about having to wash it off and all that kind of stuff, because that's not easy. Um, but you can see that, but you can see that it looks awesome. I'm really, really happy with it. I hope it matches her pebbles in her fish tank, as that's what the whole point of this was for. Um, and I hope she loves it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you next time.